more and more web developers across the world are looking to use TypeScript, which is a strongly typed superset of JavaScript. It's already the default language that you use with Angular. I'm gonna show you in this video how to set up your React projects to leverage the awesome power of TypeScript. All right, so first off, if you enjoy the video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified when the latest content comes out. So as we get started, I feel like we should give a little extra background on what TypeScript is. So TypeScript is a strongly typed superset of JavaScript. So two things there that are really important. The superset aspect of this being a superset of JavaScript means that any valid JavaScript is also valid TypeScript, but then you can add on all the features and amazing things in TypeScript, like uh, defining uh, types of your variables, defining types of parameters for functions, defining types of return values from function, defining interfaces, which we'll see in a second, things like that, um, that you can't do in JavaScript. So you can do all of your JavaScript stuff in TypeScript, and then you can also take advantage of those extra features. So the strongly typed means you actually get control over defining the types of your data. The superset of JavaScript means it adds features on top of JavaScript. What that also means is that uh, the browser doesn't understand TypeScript. The browser actually under, only understands JavaScript. So your TypeScript has to go through some sort of uh, transpilation process to be converted down to regular JavaScript so the browser can understand. So that's what React, uh, create React app and the configurations that are there are gonna do for us. We just need to kind of nudge it in the right direction to let it know, hey, we're using TypeScript and can you take care of the rest of this stuff? So if you're interested in learning more about TypeScript, uh, we'll definitely check out the TypeScript uh, website with uh, documentation. So this is at typescriptlang.org. Um, and in there, you've got uh, ability to test out TypeScript. You've got uh, documentation, a lot of good stuff in here that I would recommend checking out. So also on uh, YouTube, got a link here for a video where I walk through setting up TypeScript inside of Visual Studio Code. Uh, so I'm gonna use VS Code as my editor today. Uh, you can go through this video for a little bit of extra setup and a little bit of extra background on what TypeScript is and how you use it. So I'm gonna scroll over to a project that I generated with a command, a create React app command that tells create React app to leverage TypeScript. And that command you can find in the create react app dot dev slash docs let me zoom in on that over here so you can see that url right there so on this page there's two different ways with create react app to uh, add typescript so one is to do it from the beginning which is to run the uh, create react app command the name of your application and then the dash dash template TypeScript. So this will go ahead and generate a project that is ready to go with TypeScript. So that's what we're going to look at first. So inside of this project, actually, this is the wrong one. Let me switch over to this one, the one that actually starts with TypeScript. So notice that these files end instead of JavaScript, they end in TSX, um, which is the TypeScript file extension. So let's open this up. Let's actually start to run this npm run start let's go ahead and start this up and this will take a second it should be up and running all right cool so that's up and running so uh one of the things that i want to show is uh let's say let's say we create a header component so let's do a header dot tsx and let's just look at what's inside of the app.tsx nothing really special here so inside of header.txx, I'm gonna use an extension. This is the 2018, 19 React Redux uh, GraphQL extensions you can find inside of um, inside of VS Code. It's actually ES7 React Redux GraphQL. Uh, so let's do a functional component and this will be called header. Inside of here, uh, we'll have an H1 that says header and then let's also do a button and instead of determining what type of text to be in here, I want to receive this from props. So usually uh, you would do something like this. You would define props and uh, that would be your parameter to your function. But now that we're using TypeScript, um, it's uh, being 
it's letting us know that props is implicitly converted to an any type. So this is gonna have a type of any, and uh, we can actually be more specific here. So let's say we might do something like destructuring from props and uh, call this, say it's got a button text property. Well, this is still telling us, hey, we don't actually know what type of thing this is, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but since we're using TypeScript, we can go, and go ahead and define that. So what we'll want to do is define a TypeScript interface. Let's look at the documentation and bring up, let's see, a TypeScript in five minutes and search for interfaces. Uh, so inside of here, you can basically define what any given object looks like, the properties of an object. So let me copy this and I'll just paste it in here and we can define these are the header props. And I want a button text which starts out at, uh, or is a type of string. And then I can define my props to be a type of header props, okay? So what this means is with this function that I've just defined, the only, or with this component, the only way I get to leverage this component is if I actually pass in an object that has a button text property. So if inside of the app.ts, instead of having the header here, we're actually gonna, uh, we could just put it right on top. Let's grab the header component we just created and it'll do an auto import of that component. And if I just self close this tag, this is gonna say, hey, this doesn't pass in the props that you're looking for. Uh, primarily the button text property, which is required for the type of header props, which we defined, but we haven't passed. So let's pass in button text. And let's say, click me. Okay, so now that error goes away, let's save this inside of the header.tsx. In the button, we can use the props.button text. Okay, and that will go ahead and display that text. Let's pull it over here. Here's the header text and then the uh, click me button. So that's the text that we pass is click me. And we can also take this another step further, further like we're probably used to and just destructure button text off of header props. And then we can get rid of props here altogether, which is pretty sweet. So let's say we also wanted to maintain state in this application. Well, we can work with uh, we can work with uh, use state with React hooks. If you're not uh, if you're new to that, you can check out my React hooks video. I'll have a link here in the video that you can check out. Uh, but to use this, we'll pull in use state, and then I've got a shortcut USH, I think. Oh, maybe not. Let's just write this out from scratch. So we'll have a uh, count and a set count. And this will come from use state. And we're going to start count off at zero. And this should be a const. So what TypeScript is going to do, because we're us using TypeScript, notice that it's defining this value as a number. And the reason is because we set the initial state, the initial value of count to zero, it's inheriting the type of zero, which is number, and assigning it to the property of number. You can also see inside of set count, this takes, let's see here, uh, this is work, oh gosh, if I can get the documents to come up here correctly. Uh, you can see it's got the type of number referenced here as well. So it's pretty cool. So we are inferring the type of count. Let's do a P tag where we want to display count. And then on the button, on click, let's call a function called increment. And we'll need to define that. So const increment equals, and then we'll uh, set count to count plus plus. And this needs to be count plus one because you don't actually mutate this thing directly. You call the setter and it will update that thing for you. So count plus one, and uh, everything should work okay in here. If we save, we should click the button, click me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But if we tried something like setting this thing to a string, TypeScript is gonna yell at us and tell us that's not how this works. You define this thing as a number, but now you're trying to assign it a string value, and those two things don't match up. So TypeScript now is giving us more control over what we're setting our hooks, our variables too, because it knows the type there as well. So that works really well. Another thing that you can do is with your use state, you can define this explicitly 
to be a number, or let's actually have, well, we can start with number. So number or a null value. So this thing can be two things. It can either be a number value or it can be a num value. So if, or excuse me, null value. So if we started out at zero, we could increase it. Or at some point, if we wanted to, I don't really know why we could set this thing to null. So you can think of this as if you're uh, loading, let's see, let's get rid of this one. Let's do, let's say you're loading movies from a movie database. So we'll have movies and then set movies. And uh, we call use state and we set it initially to null because we need to make an API call to load those movies. Then we could also have an interface for movie, and then we could have title, string, uh, date, string, rating, string, and description, string. So we could define an interface just like we did for the header props, and we could say for this property, it's going to be a movie object. But the problem is because we initialize it to null, TypeScript is gonna yell at us to say null is not a movie type. So you can tell it, hey, this can be a movie or null. That way you can assign it to null to start. Then you can, uh, and actually this should be uh, movies array, but whatever, I guess this could be movie. All right, so set movie and movie. And this will be a movie object or it'll be null. So you can start out with null after you load it from your API. Now you can assign it to a movie. Otherwise you can only assign it to the value that it's defined as if you just do one of these. So you have the ability to up, update those. Another thing you can do in TypeScript is make properties optional. So if I define my button text with a question mark, this means that it's not a required property. And then that means that also, if I go over and get rid of the button text and the header, previously it yelled at us because you can't do that. It has to be all the proper, all the required properties have to be there. Since it's no longer required, it lets us do that. And then we can inside of here, uh, we could say button text or uh, whatever text we want, uh, click the button. So if we don't pass the text, it's okay because it's optional, then we can just uh, use whatever text on the button that we want to. All right, I wanna go through, uh, just give a shout out to a friend of mine online who has been JavaScript Joe and TypeScript Joe and now is Rusty Joe because he's doing some Rust development. He's and looking into Rust. He's an open source developer advocate at Facebook. He wrote this article on SitePoint uh, that you can go through and get a lot more detail about how uh, TypeScript works with React. And I would recommend just for some extra um, extra content here to go ahead and look through this article. It gets really in depth, and there's a lot of stuff that you can see in here. Um, and then you'll have that as a resource. And then back in here, I want to show lastly. Um, inside of a brand new create react app project, not one that's configured with TypeScript. I wanna show how to add it to an already existing create react app application. And you can do that on the create react app, doc, react app docs. Uh, you can install all of these things and then you're more or less ready to go. So what this is, you're installing TypeScript, you're installing the nodes type, the react types and the react doms type, as well as just, I'm not getting into testing here, so I don't need that, but what these are, are typed definitions for different libraries. So if you've ever inside of JavaScript, let's see, let's open up uh, this thing. Let's just type document. Notice that I get IntelliSense for document and when I click the dot, now I see all of the properties and functions that I could call on the document object. Where that comes from is a strong typing definition for the regular JavaScript browser APIs. What that means is there's a layer on top of it that defines for all of the JavaScript functions that are available. Here are the parameter types and the return types and lets me get IntelliSense inside of VS Code for those objects. Now the same type of thing for the libraries that we would use with React, the regular JavaScript libraries like Node, React, and React DOM, we want to install the typings on top of them so that we get the pure IntelliSense uh, that we care about with this. So what I would do is run npm install. So I'll go ahead and run this install command. It will install TypeScript itself and then the typings for Node, React, and React DOM. Now, one of the things this will allow us to do is to define our components, not just as regular functions, but actually as React functional components. And if we go back to the article 
by uh, Joe on here. If we scroll down, you can see there's a couple of different ways to define your components. Here we go. And one is actually these are the two right here. Let's just copy this. It looks like we're still installing our packages. I'm just going to put this down at the bottom. And notice right now, before we got those typings installed, we're getting uh, red on here because it doesn't know exactly what that is. It doesn't understand what that is. Let's pause the video, then we'll come back when this is finished installing and those errors should go away. All right, so we finished installing those packages. The errors are still here. And the reason is if you hover, it'll tell you, um, one, it'll tell you what the React Node thing is. So you can actually see that whole definition there on the screen of React Node, that object. But this is saying this can only be used inside of a TypeScript file, which makes sense. So you would need to rename every file that you want to use TypeScript in to a .tsx extension. So re create React app projects are configured to work with regular JavaScript files for regular JavaScript and then .tsx files if you're looking to use TypeScript. So now notice these things go away. And these are the two different ways that we can define functional components. So if we look up at the top, this is uh, defining function app. Now we can add on specifically what is app? What is this function? So we can paste in the React dot react node. This is saying this function is a react node thing. Okay, so we've defined this specifically as a react dot react node thing. So this function is of type, or it will return a type of react react node. So this value down here, that's what it returns. And that thing is a react node. So actually, if we called app, and then uh, just open and close that function. This should show us this is returning a React dot React node. So you could do that. The other way is if you use your uh, function definitions that look like this with arrow functions, a function expression. So if we said const app equals, and let's get rid of what we just added a second ago. If we did this, so there's a, 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 a reasonable way to define a functional component. We can now say this thing returns a functional component, but basically it's defining this thing to explicitly be a uh, React functional component. And if we call app again, it should tell us this thing is looking for some parameters, but it's going to return a functional component as you might expect. So two different ways to define your components to make sure that they're leveraging the specific typings in react you don't have to use this again everything in typescript every piece of javascript inside of typescript is valid typescript you can use any of your regular javascript then you can add this layer on to determine things like again interfaces for properties or just objects that you're working with um, you make a call to an api you can define an interface for the data that comes back you can define classes for the data that comes back uh, parameters variable names using use state hooks all those sorts of things you can do inside of typescript and give yourself more structure inside of your react applications so for me personally i came from before javascript a background in java and c sharp which are both very strongly typed and javascript really kind of scared me for a while because it felt like anything goes you could basically do anything and then you don't know if you have a problem until you actually try to run the code with strongly typed languages, you knew what the return types were, what the variable types were, you couldn't assign anything a wrong type of value. And it really had this like preventative, these preventative measures from allowing you to mess up, which JavaScript does not have, it's basically kind of free for all. So question of the day, are you using TypeScript? Do you have experience in a strongly typed language? How do you think that plays in with JavaScript? And do you see yourself moving to TypeScript in your JavaScript projects? at some point in the future. So I want to wrap this thing up. I want to thank you for checking out the video and I will see you in the next one.